Hi, everybody. The title of my talk is Defining a Maturity Model for SLOs. Nice to meet you. I am Judy Nino. I work as SRE Technical Program Manager for ADL Digital Labs, a company that provides technology and innovation services. Also, I am Chaos Engineering Advocate between Spanish community. If we are going to talk about maturity, it is important to know how the numbers in the industry are and where are you at. A survey applied by the authors of the book is a low adoption and usage in site reliability engineering between more than 500 industry professionals show that the 54% of respondents don't have SLOs, but interestingly, 35% said that they use a different metric to track user happiness. You can see that the most respondents are involved in identifying metrics for evaluating SLOs. When S. Longenberg started this journey related to SLOs, Cloud technology and SRE were novel to company product teams. They are the milestone that I identified in this in a Slongenberg journey. I am talking about learning, defining, implementing, adapting, alert, alerting, and evangelizing. The goal with this maturity model is helping move organization toward a an SLO-centric approach that provides both teams with a common frame of reference that they can integrate into conversations to improve business practices. We have defined two axes to move, adoption and implementation. So let me start with adoption. About adoption, we have identified four stages in the stories of others and in our journey. In the next slides, I am going to talk about them. Specifically, I am going to show some signal that allow you to know if you are in an initial investment appropriation or expect, expectation level. Let me start with the initial level. Probably there are conflicting objectives between development and operation teams when you decide to adopt uh, practice based on SLOs. This, um, this fact uh, are affecting the customer experience and quality of service, which imposes a challenge to begin an SLO journey. In this access, the, prim, the premise or the goal is to adopt a culture based on SLOs. And then we want that measuring SLOs has an impact in the business decision. In an initial level, it is common that no systems is covered by SLOs. There is low or not organizational awareness, but organizations decide to adopt SLOs. Early adopters infrequently perform SLOs. And about investment, the second level. Since we began our SLO journey, it, it, it use of SLOs has to evolve to a way to increase engineering velocity and maintain quality of services. In this stage, we move into product development, resource allocation, and everyday business decisions. So in this level, it is common that experimentation is officially sanctioned. Part-time resources are dedicated to the practice. Multiple teams are interested and engaged. And few critical services are supported by SLOs. It is important that organizations begin with measuring just a few services that are critical to reliable and or uh, the critical experience. Once you have a few SLOs in place, you can expand your SLOs practice. In a third level, I am, I am going to talk about appropriation. In this stage, we want developers to be able to launch code without requiring a team dedicated of dedicated operations engineer. 
This requires that we generate a culture in which developers are required to do more than just deliver code. In this level, SLOs are part of new features and fixes backlog. This backlog can include fixes to software, increased telemetry, to improve observability or improvements to automation to reduce cover time. We have observability in dashboards that reports insights into how SL, SL, SRAs um, identify ambient reliability. And SLOs help in improving the reliability of the services. Finally, about the expectation. In this final step, during cultural expectation, all critical and no critical services are frequently supported with SLOs. The SLOs, SLAs, and uh, error budgets provide data-driven ch change management strategy that allows organizations to pursue in its goals of releasing uh, new features and software solutions while protecting the reliability of the service. And probably the most important signal that you are here is your SRI, SRI, SRI team are evangelizing about SLAs, SLOs, and even SLAs, uh, generating expectatives about reliability of your services. SRA, team hold a series of workshops introducing and educating developers and business teams on SLOs concepts and how to develop and use SLOs and SLAs to manage the development of their services in a cloud environment. Let me talk now about implementation, the second axis. Uh, for this axis, we have learned that there, that there are four milestones that can help us to move in this journey. So let me start at the beginning with the initial stage. In this level for organizations, SLOs are not a concern for them. However, since the organization began an SLO journey, some signals in this stage are SLOs don't support the service and production. Results don't reflect business metrics. In the practice, it could consist in reading logs, generating reports, and using manual charts. I don't recommend to use an observability tool in these first actions. Uh, the tool available um, in the market is very powerful and expensive. If you don't have experience, you may feel overwhelmed about usage. Once the SLOs and SLAs go live, they are, they are used to mitigate, um, to mitigate outages while pursuing rapid release of features or fixes, thereby maintaining high standards of software delivery quality to customers. With SLO and SLA metrics in place, all the stakeholders have, have um, a framework for gathering and monitoring performance data on the new features. SLO and SLA data will become much more meaningful and rich. SLAs indicate how well certain features penetrate the market. You are using an observability tool and take advantage for making decisions. Now we can talk about automation. In this level, organizations um, are building tooling to support available observability um, tools. Uh, with these tools, uh, it can look at its existing performance graphics, observe the behavior of SLAs and SLOs, uh, of course. Another signals include setup, provisioning, dashboards, and result analysis are automated. SLO framework is integrated with continuous delivery, and SLO results and compare between releases and control groups. Finally, events like service layer impacts and combination failures are applied to experimental group. Finally, I am going to talk about evolution. SLOs should evolve as your system or user journeys evolve. Over time, your system change and you Current SLOs may 
not cover new features or new expectations. Organizations should plan to review their SLO and SLA definition after a few months and modify them to reflect the current status of your system and your, and your user experience. And the, and the engineers and solutions teams correlate this information with, the, with new features releases and see whether there is an uptake in the request to those new services.